The topic today that we're going to talk about is being vigilant, especially with our children. So again, the topic, being vigilant, especially with our children. That's the topic that we're going to talk about. So they had this uh, thing that was on the news just a couple of days ago where they had an undercover sting operation in Georgia where they um, busted up a, a, a child molestation ring or prostitution ring, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. um, and they, you know, they caught quite a few people um, in that. And, uh, you know, I was looking at the story and I was like, you know what, this is not even scratching the surface of all the wickedness that goes on with that stuff. Mm -hmm. Because nowadays, you know, a lot of stuff is being done online and a lot of, I mean, everything is just pretty much being done online. They're going online and recruiting kids, going in these chat rooms and different things and you know, trying to lure them into certain things, certain sexual acts and stuff like that. And um, a lot of parents just, they have no idea, no clue, because, you know, they're not doing um, what they're supposed to do as a parent for the most part as far as, um, you know, being vigilant and teaching their children what's right and what's wrong, you know, according to the scriptures, how a man and a woman should behave intimately, so on and so forth. You know, so that's why we're going to go over um, over this topic today. So the first scripture is um, 2 Timothy chapter 3. Okay. And if you can read verse 1 for me first. Okay. 2 Timothy chapter 3, starting at verse 1. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Okay, so this was the letter um, that the Apostle Paul was writing to Timothy. And he's telling him, know this, that in the last days, and we are living in the last days now, perilous mm -hmm. times shall come. So a lot of evil things are going to happen. Hard times are going to come. These are the days that we're living in. So he was given a warning to Timothy that, hey, look, these things are going to happen. So stay right here in this mm -hmm. chapter and skip down to verse 13. <clears throat> but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Okay, so it says evil men mm -hmm. and seducers. So people that are out there that are what? Going after children. That's an evil thing, right? Those people and other people and other evil is going to what? Wax worse and worse. Mm -hmm. Because the internet is like an open portal, man, to all that stuff. I mean, they got stuff on the internet that a lot of people, parents don't even know about, man. You got sites that, you know, the a lot of these kids are into that. Their parents have no idea, no clue about it. You understand? So it says, evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse. So it's not going to get any better. It's going to get worse and worse. Mm -hmm. So that's why we have to what be vigilant, especially with our children, and teach our children the right examples and teach them what the scripture say, says and how we should um, you know, behave ourselves. Mm hmm so it says, but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being <laughs> deceived. So what? They're deceiving people into their evil. So they're going online. They're luring these little kids. Oh, you know, um, I can buy you certain gifts, certain bags, the latest phone, latest gadget, whatever. I can give you this. I can give you that. They're promising them the world, deceiving those people. Right? And even says, and even they themselves are being deceived because they think in a lot of cases that they're going to get away with what they're doing, and they're not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Read on. <clears> 2 <throat> Timothy 3, verse 14. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, 
which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Okay, so he's saying, okay, continue thou in the things which thou has learned mm -hmm. and has been assured of knowing of whom thou has learned them. And we're going to go <clears throat> to one place here in a minute mm -hmm. that shows you how he was raised, Timothy was raised. Mm -hmm. But he's telling him, continue in those things, right? The scriptures, it says, because from a child... Thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation. So what makes a person wise? Them knowing and applying the scriptures to their lives. So as parents, guess what? You have to be teaching your children these things, man. Mm -hmm. Listen, teach your children it's inappropriate, right, for someone to be touching your private parts. It's inappropriate for someone to be making advances towards you like that. Mm -hmm. That's what you should teach your children and then go over the scriptures, which we're going to go over in a minute, that says that. So when they're confronted with these things, when you're not there, whether they be online or at school, wherever, mm -hmm. they know, okay, that's wrong and I shouldn't be doing that. And this person should be saying these things to me mm -hmm. because of thus, thus, and thus, what I've been taught by my parents and what the scripture says. So it says, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith that is in Christ Jesus. Now it's about, you know, the faith, having the faith of Christ. But mm -hmm. again, it's about us teaching our children the scriptures, what they say to so that they can avoid these evil men and seducers that are out there. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's go to um, 2 Timothy 1. Okay. And we're going to read verse 3 and verse 5. Because remember we read, it says, But continue thou on the things which thou hast learned. So okay. how was this brother here raised? 2 Timothy 1, starting at 3. I thank God, whom I serve from my forefathers, with pure conscience, that without ceasing I have remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day. Verse 5. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that in thee also. Okay, so this was the same letter that <coughs> Paul was writing to Timothy. Mm -hmm. And he's saying that, okay... When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith, so they had a great faith, right? That was first, what, in his grandmother and in his mother, mm -hmm. because that's who he was raised by. Mm -hmm. And then I'm, and he says, I'm persuaded that that's in you also, because you've known him and you've seen his works. Mm -hmm. But this is how Timothy was raised from a child. He was raised by his grandmother and his mother. So we go over these scriptures all the time saying that, you know what, today, in today's world, and even back here too, mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of women that are raising these children, a lot of grandmothers, a lot of aunts, mothers, whoever, mm -hmm. and daddy ain't around. But it's still your responsibility to teach your children what the Bible says mm -hmm. about life. Because okay. we're seeing an example here. No, I was just saying, yeah, I was agreeing with you. But yeah. you know what? Mm-hmm. When it says, I thank God, whom I serve from my forefathers. I thought Christ came and changed everything. <laughs> nope, not at all. So, when you're teaching your children to not argue and not go into striving and... and uh, fighting and hatred, which leads to the spirit of murder, mm -hmm. you can go to Abraham and Lot. Listen, yep. our servants are fighting over our property. Listen, we're not going to strive because mm -hmm. we're brothers. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you can go into um, the, the commandments. And we know Abraham kept the commandments. Yep. You know, so, th it, and then we have the edification and the example that came through Christ. Yep. That's what it's all about. Exactly. That's a good point because some people will, you know, disconnect the Old Testament mm -hmm. and stuff. So yeah. Well, I take point. my kid to church on Sunday, and I, you know, and I, you know, I give them a dollar to put in the collection plate. 
Yeah, he or he attends Sunday school where he doesn't really learn much, you know? Yeah. That's another thing, too. Mm -hmm. So you have to take the active role and teach your children these mm -hmm. things, okay? Don't leave it to someone else to do it. Um, let's go from there to Proverbs 22. Mm -hmm. And um, we're going to read verse 6, okay? Well, let's see. <clears throat> Proverbs 22, verse 6. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Okay. So, train up a child in the way he should go. The way all of us should go is the way of Jesus Christ. Because remember what he said? Well, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Mm -hmm. Right? No man can come mm -hmm. to the Father except through me. So, the way we should go is to learn about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and how to be like Him. And we should be teaching our children mm -hmm. the same things. So, train up our child the same way. When he is old, he will not depart from it. Just like we read in that example about Timothy. He, his grandmother and his mother had that unfeigned faith of Christ, and then... He was taught that way, and when he was get, when he got older, when Paul was writing him that letter, he was like, yo, man, I'm convinced that that same thing is in you. Mm -hmm. Why? Because he's mm -hmm. seen his works. He's seen him. Mm -hmm. So when, we, when we're training up our children, this is how it should be. Train up our children in the way of Christ. So we look at Christ, how he lived his life. All of us have a, a, a Bible. If you don't, you can get one for free. Mm -hmm. But all of us have access to it, mm -hmm. and we have the scriptures on how Christ lived his life. When he came here as a young man, you know, he wasn't running around trying to date women or whatever and try to sleep with every woman, mm -hmm. you know, that he came across. Even as an older adult, he didn't do that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? He didn't go around trying to kill people, even though they try to kill him. Or post up on their block. Exactly. A lot of stuff that we see our children are getting involved in these days, we don't see any. We didn't see any of that uh, with Christ. So when we're training up our children, these are some of the things that we have to train them. Because like I said, or like the scripture says, evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse. So, I mean, almost everything now, man, is doing online. Bro, they're even recruiting um, people for gang and stuff online. I mean, that stuff is crazy. And, like, you know, and like I said, a lot of parents don't even know this stuff, man. <clears throat> Their kids are on a the computer. They're in the back cooking, whatever, or out and about mm -hmm. clubbing, whatever. They don't mm -hmm. care. They don't give a damn. To put as long it as bluntly. he ain't doing nothing right there. Exactly. You know, he ain't acting up right there. He should be doing his homework. Exactly. You know, he chatting with a cat that um, the TV show trying to catch. <laughs> you know. <laughs> exactly. You know, you got to watch it. You got to be vigilant. Vigilant yeah. means always be aware and waiting. Exactly. Exactly. So it says, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. So, mm -hmm. you know, all these things are happening, man. And, um, you know, people are just wondering why. I mean, some people have the common sense to say, you know what, <clears throat> that kid just wasn't raised right. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But we're look we're going over the solution here and what the things that we should be doing. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go into the apocrypha. Uh, let's go to Ecclesiasticus chapter seven. Okay. And I always like to just give a little introduction of this book because mm -hmm. I don't know who's listening for the first time or not. But mm -hmm. basically, the apocrypha is a part of the Bible in the original 1611 version. It was included in there, and in later years they took it out. Okay, mm -hmm. but you can still get these books here um, and read it for yourself. Yeah. So Ecclesiasticus chapter seven, mm -hmm. and we're gonna read verse twenty-four. Ecclesiasticus chapter seven, verse twenty-four. Hast thou daughters? Have care of their body, and show not thyself cheerful toward them. Okay. So it's showing you that, okay, yeah, you might have kids, but when you have females, girls, mm -hmm. a daughter, mm -hmm. it's saying, have thou daughters, have a, cheer of, have a care of their body. Mm -hmm. So 
be vigilant enough and teach them what the scripture says about a woman being a woman, not running around, sleeping with everybody, giving it up to everybody, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. That's her having a care of her body. Mm -hmm. And when it says, um, and show not thyself cheerful toward them, it's not talking about you being serious and not laughing or joking or whatever. It's not talking about that. It's talking about like, the scriptures would say, wink at their follies or something like that. So if they do something bad, you know, you don't correct it. That's basically what it's going into. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. but it's telling us that if we have daughters, we have to take what this extra vigilant step. Because why? There's a lot of evil people out there. A lot of men. I know, bro, <laughs> I know I said it when I was in um, high school, man. I had some friends. Mm -hmm. These dudes was just off the chain, man. I know I was used to be like, yo, man, if I ever have a daughter, man, y'all would never come around my daughter. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm saying? I mean, almost yeah. everybody said, you know, because yeah. we know people that's like that, dude. Yep, 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 yep. You know what I'm saying? So it's like an extra thing, man. Mm -hmm. So the scriptures mm -hmm. are telling us that, what, if we have daughters, this is how we have to be. Mm -hmm. We have to take that extra step. Mm -hmm. You understand? Because a lot of them, too, they're very gullible to all the nonsense of the world, you know, the, all the materialistic mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, it's talking about being stern with them. Mm -hmm. Like you might, uh, you know, let uh, a young man stay out a little bit later, but. You know, you'd always want your daughters in earlier. I mean, that's how we was raised. Right. You know, the girls had to come in first and stuff. And um, they um, uh, had different chores than the, the boys coming up and stuff like that. Let me, can I read the next verse? Yeah. yeah. Uh, verse 25. Marry thy daughter, and so shalt thou have performed a weighty matter. But give her to a man of understanding. So that's what all of that is leading up to. Mm -hmm. So what you're doing with your daughter, well, you're preparing your son to be a man. Yep. But you're preparing uh, your daughter to be a woman. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a help meet. Right. You know, as the Bible says. So, but the important thing is you want her to know and understand the right thing to do, but it's... Like you're also in, uh, you're performing or no, you're uh, watching over her and, and making sure that the man she gets with has understanding. Right. Which is totally contrary to how the world is today. Exactly. You know, so a girl just go out, sneak out or whatever and get it. I know somebody that um, their, uh their daughter was sneaking out the window. I, I know. Well, God, I know. It goes yeah. back to when I was younger. Yeah, I was about to, I was about to correct you on that, bro. Yeah, for a long time, they're sneaking out the window, exactly. and then they that end up with new. somebody. Then they don't. The, yep. the the young man don't want to take care of the child and all this stuff, and it just blows up into a whole situation mm. that has lasting consequences. Yep. You don't want to. Uh, you know, although the children from that would be will still be beautiful, you don't want to burden your daughter with the, having to deal with that type of situation because that's against the order of the Most High. Exactly. You know, so that's why you a, a little bit more stern or and, and uh, um, not cheerful toward them. Exactly, bro. That's a good point, man. And we have to be this way because. You know, I was watching something the other day, mm -hmm. um, a documentary. It was, mm -hmm. it was very disturbing, bro. It was mm -hmm. about, like, um, uh, prostitution and stuff like that. And they were mm -hmm. talking to some of the pimps or whatever. <laughs> and these dudes, you know how they always justify stuff, mm -hmm. man. But the disturbing part to me was, um, you know, what they used to do. Mm -hmm. They used to, like, go to high schools and even junior high schools sometimes. Yeah, yep. And hang out and try to pick out girls or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then talk to them, and then they end up running away. The girls end up running away, whatever, and then they, you know, mm -hmm. become a prostitute or whatever. Nowadays, there was like, listen, it's a lot safer, a lot better doing it online. Yep. And I'm like, the and these are young girls, bro. Yep. High school kids, man. Yep. Why do you think that stuff on Facebook or on the internet comes out where... Um, the dude took pictures of her of his daughter, mm -hmm. and she was, I think, five nine, 
and 12 years old and had a, it, her T-shirt airbrushed, I'm only 12. Uh, I'm only 12, Was wrote yeah. a little note with it. Listen, leave this girl alone. Right. I'm going to come looking for you. Right. You know, because it's men out there with perverse minds that exactly. just want to defile and spoil and abuse your daughters and, exactly. your, and nowadays your sons as well. Exactly. So you got to be extra vigilant. Yep, you know? exactly. Exactly, man. So that's why we're going over these scriptures, mm -hmm. man, showing you that if we have a daughter, have a care of their body, man. That's how we should be, man. Mm -hmm. And that's what the scriptures are saying. So let's go from there to Deuteronomy chapter 6. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to read verse verses 6. And verses 7. Okay. Deuteronomy chapter 6, starting at 6. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. Stop. So, all, everything that we've read so far, mm -hmm. I mean, I didn't write it. Mm -hmm. I know you didn't write it. Oh, no, I can't write. <laughs> these are the words of the Lord, man. Mm -hmm. You understand? These are the words of the Lord. So, he's saying like what? All these words which I command thee shall mm -hmm. be in thine heart. So have it in your mind. Mm -hmm. And these are the words that were commanded that Paul worshiped God with from exactly. his forefathers with a pure conscience. Exactly. Good point. Read on. Read verse 7. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. Okay. So, it's saying thou shalt teach them diligently. Mm -hmm. So, if you have children, what you have to be very diligent with them, man. Mm -hmm. Always instructing them. <clears throat> Always having a care for them. That mm -hmm. As thou daughters have a care for their body. Mm -hmm. Always being that way. It says, thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children and shall talk of them when thou sittest in thine house. Mm -hmm. So you have a lot of parents that, you know, say, well, you know what, whatever, whatever they do online. I mean, that's their business. Yo, y'all go in the back room, play on the computer, man. We have this grown folks up here, man. We up here. We we, we talking grown folks. We drinking and smoking, y'all. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Exactly. So, but you know what? Y'all just taught them that when they think they older, mm -hmm. it'll be okay for them to drink and smoke. Yep, exactly. Because that's what grown folks do. Exactly, exactly. So beware what you're teaching them. Yep, exactly. That's true. Mm -hmm. It says, and when thou and shall talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, mm -hmm. and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down and risest up. So when you're going to sleep, when you're putting them to sleep, when you first wake up, so this is all time. It's just like you said, sitting around playing cards, hell, watching TV, mm -hmm. watching some of these foolish shows they got on, man. I mean, yep. always being vigilant because what do they push? They push a certain image, mm -hmm. especially with women. Mm -hmm. Oh, they got to be this figure. Oh, they got to be this shape. Mm -hmm. Oh, this, that, blah, blah, blah. And a lot of women get sucked into that. Yep. And that's why it talks about have uh, care with your daughters over their body because if you raise a, a daughter... She's going to be uh, uh, able to understand that she has beauty in the way that she acts. Right. If you manage a daughter, like you have a momager, mm -hmm. a mom manager, you're going to have a kid that's a teenager. And as soon as it's legally possible uh, uh, for them to do so, they're going to get plastic surgery. Exactly. Exactly. You know, so there's a difference. Exactly. And you don't want your daughters getting sucked up into this. Exactly, bro. Because, mm -hmm. you know, what, you know, I've, I've, I've seen a lot of stories. And not, mm -hmm. even, that, not even just the stories. In my mm -hmm. own personal life and people I know and stuff. Mm -hmm. What do they usually teach? Oh, the darker you are, you know, well, if you're lighter, it's better. Mm -hmm. So then, uh, you know, especially a lot of girls, they do a lot of stuff to what make their appearance lighter mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Yeah. And you know, you know what was um, I, it was funny. I, mm -hmm. I was on a, um, YouTube the other day, and I was like, mm -hmm. "What the hell?" I saw the, the thing with Little Kim. Oh my god, bro, <laughs> dude! I'm like, yo, what? She she went from like beautiful to like I I don't even know what it. Well, 
I'm gonna say this. Her lyrics were always raunchy and stuff like that. And um, you know, I didn't really like that about her, but she was cute. Right. Now yeah. she just totally abandoned everything that was original about her so she could have a look. You know, and that's setting a bad example for Thank for our you. kids. Thank you, bro. That's what one of the um writers was saying on I think mm-hmm. Huff Post or whatever. It's like, listen, man, a lot of people be, you know, looked up to her because she, mm-hmm. just like what you said, her lyrics was raunchy, but the thing that they liked about her is she kind of set her own pace and, you know, especially in that industry where she yeah, did, did her own thing. Yeah. And, you know, uh, aside from the award show outfit, yeah. she had, you know, she's like wearing nice gear and stuff like that. And, you right. know, and she was cute the way she was. Right. And they always say black don't crack. So she yep. probably would look exactly the same yeah. that she used to. But you know? did you hear her her reason for doing that? Not again. Go on. <laughs> okay. She, according to her, or according to what I read, she said that um, a lot of men that she's dealt with have cheated on her with... Becky with the good hair? Yeah, European women. So she decided to do that, do that plastic surgery well, instead of getting out that life, exactly, and de- dealing with the scriptures and preparing herself f- to be a righteous woman for a righteous man that the Lord would eventually send her. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So you know, going back to this, when it says, "And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children when you're in the house, walk us by the way, lie down." These are things that we should be t- telling our children, man. Mm-hmm. Listen, and we're going to go over it in a minute. But us as the Lord's people, man, I know we're you know in these busted up conditions or whatever. But we're still, when we're doing the commandments of the Lord, mm-hmm. we are a special people. Mm-hmm. So we don't need to do any of that, those mm-hmm. things to uh, enhance our beauty or do this. We don't need to do any of that. Because mm-hmm. we're special in the eyes of the Lord. Yeah. When we're doing what he tells us to do, but, but remember one of the cur- or some of the curses that Moses and others said would happen, and then Christ said in Luke twenty one, all of these things written will be fulfilled. Yep. Some of those things would be about well, you know what? We'd be the tail. Mm-hmm. Other people would be the head. Right. We would. They would take everything that we have, uh, like cultural appropriation. Yep. Like, you know, from big lips, big hips, Mm -hmm. all the way down to the, you know, for example, chicken wings. You know, they was being made in the South in Baltimore and D.C. and other places in the South for years before they were invented here in Buffalo. Right. You know, um, everything. Mm -hmm. And they would impose their standards of, of what they thought on us. Right. You know, so that's why... Little Kim is doing stuff like that. Exactly. Because she, you know, just following along with the program instead of yep. searching out and finding about finding out about who she is and what she should do to repent. That's an excellent point, man, because that's what they push as what the ideal beauty is or whatever. Mm-hmm. And that's a part of the curse. You're right. Mm-hmm. You know, but that's why we have to come back to the scriptures, see our true heritage, mm-hmm. what we were as a people. And know that, you know what, yeah, we are special uh, people in the eyes of the Lord when mm-hmm. we're doing what's right in his eyes. Mm-hmm. All right. So let's go from there. We're going to go back into the Apocrypha again. Ecclesiasticus mm-hmm. uh, chapter 30 this time. Okay. And um, we're going to read verse. I was uh, going to go. I wanted to go in here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was just thinking about this scripture. <laughs> all right. So mm-hmm. read verse 8. I'm not sure if this is the. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, all right. Uh, Ecclesiasticus chapter 30, verse 8. And horse not broken becometh headstrong, and a child left to himself will be willful. Okay. So going into what we just read about always being diligent when you're in the house, when you lie down, when you rise up, it says what? And horse not broken becometh headstrong. So when you look at a horse, 
uh for for the most part they're usually wild like they're mm-hmm. wild so mm-hmm. in order to ride them or even like what well, just happened the Kentucky Derby whatever mm-hmm. in order to get them that way they have to be broken they have to be trained mm-hmm. so if they're not like that it says what well, they're going to be headstrong they're just going to be doing their own thing mm-hmm. then it says and a child left to himself will be willful Mm-hmm. So man, it's grown just like the exam. It's grown folks in here, man. Go, go on the back, go on the computer somewhere, whatever. Mm-hmm. Okay, man, fine. I'm gonna figure it out for myself. Exactly. And then that's mm-hmm. when they become willful and do their own thing, mm-hmm. going online, get seduced mm-hmm. by these perverted, perverse men, these evil men, mm-hmm. right? That's trying to get your children, especially your daughters, mm-hmm. to do all kinds of wickedness. Mm-hmm. And some of the stuff, man, is, listen, like I said before at the beginning, this stuff is not even scratching the surface. Bro, I mean, I've seen and heard stuff where a lot of children go missing. People know about this. Yeah. Never to be heard from again. Yeah. And what a lot of people don't know, in this world and in this country, there's a big child sex ring where a lot of children are captured and they're used as sex slaves. This yeah. ain't no conspiracy theory. This ain't none of that. It's a the, truth. Exactly. These things happen. And and I and I'll put it out there, listen, for a long time, mm-hmm. me myself, I thought that stuff just happened like overseas, bro. I'm not gonna lie. Nah. Yeah. Dude, they got tired of putting little kids on milk cartons, man. It just start it was happening so <clears throat> much. I think the number is sixty five or seventy thousand a year. It's crazy. Just go just go missing. And what you know, you can't let the streets take your kids. You can't let the you gotta you just gotta watch exactly. your kids and teach them and you know, um like I I've I've seen a, a, a meme on the internet. Two ladies sitting in the airport. Mm-hmm. There's one lady sitting there reading a book to her kid while they waiting for the plane. Mm-hmm. Next over is one of my cousins. Mm-hmm. All right, on my father's side, one mm-hmm. of my cousins over there mm-hmm. sitting there. She on her phone. Mm-hmm. The kid is in the chair next to the mother, looking at the mother. He got toys and stuff, and he's like, "No, interact with me." She all on her phone. She ain't worried about it, man. Go ahead, man. And the 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 caption underneath the thing was, "Do you notice the difference in the way these kids are being raised?" <laughs> oh. That is just something else, man. And you know what? That's important to say, too, because Mm -hmm. even, I mean, listen, you have to be vigilant with your children, and especially, like, Mm -hmm. when you're in public places like that, because there's a lot of evil and wickedness that goes on, man. Even Mm -hmm. a a lot of, in some of these hotels and stuff, Mm -hmm. I know I was talking to the one brother, um, like, in Florida and stuff, where all the parks are, a lot of children go missing. Yep. You know what I'm saying? A lot of children go missing, never to be heard from again. I know, and a lot of other places too, a lot of parks and stuff. Why? You there messing with your phone, the kid running around there. It, there are people out there preying on children, man. So you have to be vigilant. You have to teach them the scriptures. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So this is the point. It says mm-hmm. a child left to himself will be willful. Mm-hmm. It's saying about no religion or no that old law. Or what book is that? It's the saying about that man. It's about doing what's right, mm-hmm. raising your children the right way, man. Mm-hmm. Yep. Let's yeah. yeah you got two yeah. verses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Verse two. Uh, Ecclesiastes thirty verse two. He that chastiseth his son shall have joy in him and shall rejoice of him among his acquaintance. If you train and raise up your kid, you're going to have joy of him when he's older because he's going to be a productive member of society. I don't care if he's a janitor, garbage man, or CEO. Mm -hmm. And you're going to be proud of of your son around your friends. Look at my son. Look at all the stuff that he did. Right. You know? Remember all those times I couldn't hang out with y'all because I was doing stuff with the kid? Mm -hmm. This is the result. Read verse 3. He that teacheth his son grieveth the enemy, Mm -hmm. and before his friends he shall rejoice of him. Yeah, because they don't want 
They don't want us growing up uh, elevating ourselves out of our position. Nope. And I'm not talking about everybody else that's here. I'm talking about the people that run the place. They don't want they don't want you achieving something that they don't have programmed for you. Mm-hmm. They don't want your kids achieving something that they don't have programmed for your kids. Why do you think it's all this bubonic plague sex magic in music today? <laughs> exactly. Because they want them to do that. Exactly. They don't want them to elevate out of that madness. Mm-hmm. So when they see that and your, your children are elevating out of that madness, it makes them grieved. Yep. All right. And before his friends, he shall rejoice of it. Yeah, look at my look at my son, look at my daughter. You know, they 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 they're wise, they don't do stupid stuff, they don't mm-hmm. they do this, they don't do that. I'm so glad they turned out good. Yeah. Now I can relax in my old age or in my middle age. Mm-hmm. You know, that's the and that's the point. Yep. Yep, exactly, bro. Good points. All right, so let's see now. Let's go to Hebrews 13. Let's look at mm-hmm. things, some things that we should be teaching them, mm-hmm. teaching our children. I know we touched on them before, but let's just go to the scriptures and see what the scripture mm-hmm. says. So we read this all the time, but it's very important because mm-hmm. people ain't doing it. Mm-hmm. Hebrews 13, verse 4. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. So the scriptures is telling us that. Don't judge me. <laughs> yeah, right. Sorry. <laughs> I know. So it says, marriage is honorable in all and the bed undefiled. So mm-hmm. when a man and a woman mm-hmm. are married and whatever the hell they do in their bedroom, it's, it's undefiled. It's okay in the eyes of God. Mm-hmm. That's what the scriptures are saying. So, but whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. So if we're not like that, so if we're not married and we're having any kind of sex, sexual intimacy, whatever, mm-hmm. that's considered a whoremonger or an adulterer. Mm-hmm. And mo- and the Most High God is going to deal with you. So when we deal with our children, this is, this is, this is, this is something that we should be teaching them. Mm-hmm. Saying, you know what? No man should be making any advances towards you as a young man or as a young mm-hmm. woman or vice versa, whatever. Mm-hmm. No one should be doing that. No one should be touching your private parts. Mm-hmm. You understand? No one should be doing any of that because those things are just reserved for a man and a woman that's mm-hmm. married. Mm-hmm. These are the things that we should be teaching our children so when they're not in your presence and they encounter these things, they know, hey, you know what? That's wrong because mommy taught me this, daddy taught me this, mm-hmm. grandma taught me this according to the Bible. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to be doing that. Mm-hmm. If I'm online and someone is making those advances towards me, guess what? I'm going to click the X at the top and get the hell out of this website and go mm-hmm. somewhere else. Yep. And clean it's, my cookies and do a virus search. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> virus scan, right? Now. Exactly. Mm-hmm. This is what we should be teaching our children, man. Mm-hmm. Because right. we don't see this. You see kids kids having kids today. Mm-hmm. Children, man. Yep. Yep. Can I go somewhere real yeah, quick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exodus 22. All right. Now, Christ came and gave us the perfect understanding of marriage according mm-hmm. to as it was written from the beginning. Yep. No divorce. Okay. Uh, Paul expounded on that with uh, the understanding of uh, if you want to have a spiritual understanding, you must be the husband of one wife. Mm-hmm. Okay. But let's go to Exodus 22, 16. And there's a reason that this ordinance was written is because the people were going against it and it displeased the Lord. So it had to be written exactly down so they could look at it, study it, figure it out so that they could understand it. Exactly. Abraham understood it. Yep. Okay. So read Exodus 22 and 16. And if a man entice a maid that is not betrothed, Stopped. that is not with anybody, not promised to anybody, not dating anybody, or no, not dating, but not feeling out anybody to see if they want to marry him. Mm-hmm. Read on. And lie with her. And have sex with her. He meaning should co- consummate the act of marriage, that spiritual bondage, uh, bond of marriage. If they consummate that physically, what shall they have to do? He shall surely 
endow her to be his wife. Meaning provide for her to be his wife. So you tell your daughter, she's 14, 12, 16, whatever. Oh, this dude like me, you know, we want to get together. Okay, right now, we're your parents. We give you a house. We pay the utility bills. We do this, we do that, food, this, that. This dude got a house? Mm -hmm. Does he have a car, separate car for you to go to work or to a, a car to take you to work? Exactly. Uh, does he have... Uh, a house, a job, or that, can he provide for you mm -hmm. anything other than smooth talk on the phone or a couple kisses on the neck yep. and the desire to go further? Can he provide it? No. Then, Well, okay, then what can he give you in the long run? Mm -hmm. That's going against the word of the Lord. Exactly. And you'll never have that bond if there is never... First of all, they got to walk in Christ. Yep. And then second of all, the man is willing uh, to provide for that woman and the woman ready to help that man provide for the family. Mm -hmm. That's going to come because that's what sex was for. That's why when people have sex, usually the babies pop up. Exactly. But people don't understand this. Exactly. But that's why it had to be written. But we don't understand it now. That's why we have a lot of uh, babies having babies. Exactly, bro. Good point, man. You know, it's funny, bro, because, uh, well, not even funny, but I was laughing. Funny, because, weird. Yeah. It, I was laughing the way how the lady was refer, um, referring the story to me. But mm -hmm. she has a son, and um, I, I forgot how old he is, but he's under 10. Oh, my God. So... She was like, she said she was getting upset because girls in, their, in the school or whatever be making advances towards him. Oh, I like your son. He's cute. Blah, blah, blah. And she, you know, she's, I put it, she's ghetto. So she basically, <laughs> she cussed them out. Uh -huh. She's like, you little, yeah, don't you ever blah, blah, blah to my son. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, I was sitting there appalled because I'm like, that young? Yeah. Yeah. Yo, man, when I was, let me see, when did I have that truck? 95? No, 97. Listen, I used to drop my daughter off at school. One of her schoolmates was like, you know, talking to her. Uh -huh. So when I picked her up from school, uh -huh. she was like, such and such want to know if you got a girlfriend. <laughs> I'm like, the girl's seven years old, what? How did it? Oh, my what? God. <laughs> what roll? <laughs> what? I now, wow. listen, okay, yeah, okay, you think I'm cute or whatever. That can't happen. Right. Be because, you know, you're not prepared to be a wife and a mother. It, I'm not I'm not Muhammad. <laughs> I'm not taking a baby for a bride, because he did. Right. <laughs> and that it's, it, was, it, was, it was lawful in that doctrine. That's yeah. why uh, people that are little... Uh, young ladies that are running away from those marriages are getting beat and whipped yep. to this day yep. because of that. Because it was okay for them. Exactly. You know, check out the religions that you're checking into. You exactly. Know? But go ahead. Yeah, bro. That's a good point, man. All right. So let's go mm -hmm. back into the Apocrypha okay. to Ecclesiasticus now 42. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, you know, we're going to drive this point home here dealing mm -hmm. with our daughters. Mm-hmm. Um, 42 verse 9 and 10. And this is the other scripture I was thinking about. Ecclesiasticus <laughs> okay. chapter 42 verses 9 and 10. The father waketh for the daughter when no man knoweth, and the care for her taketh away sleep. When she is young, lest she pass away the flower of her age, and being married, lest she should be hated. In her virginity, lest she should be defiled, and gotten with child in her father's house. And having an husband, lest she should be misbehave herself. And when she is married, lest she should be barren. Okay, so this is going into that care again. Mm -hmm. Has thou daughters? Have a care for their body. Mm -hmm. This is going into how it should be. This is how it was at one point. The father waketh for the daughter when no man knoweth, man. Mm -hmm. Sitting up worried about his daughter, man. How is she doing? Where is she at? Yep, yo, you was worried about a daughter. 
when you was younger, like, yo, if I ever have a daughter, I'm oh, never yeah, letting cats like you around my daughter, man. Uh, yeah, you're right. And didn't even have a daughter. Exactly. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> you're right about that. Because as men, we know yeah, how know, men are. Exactly. You know, so that's a good point. So, and that's the thing. That's what it's saying. Take care of her when, she, when she's young. It says, at least she passed away the flower of her age. And that's talking about losing her virginity. Mm -hmm. And being married, at least she should be hated. Mm -hmm. Then if you look on, there is a semicolon there. So it's just continuing on. It mm -hmm. says, in her virginity, at least she should be de defiled and gotten with child in her father's house. Meaning the man wasn't able to provide for her. He just wanted to hit it and quit it. Exactly. And listen, at one point... It was like this, especially amongst us. Yeah. Because I know the yeah. story, Um, mm -hmm. the brother always says that yeah. he had some cousin or whatever yeah. who just packed up and left or whatever, went to Chicago, wherever, yeah. Yeah. because she got, uh, she had a kid or whatever, but it was a shameful thing. Yes, it was. She couldn't stay in her father's house at exactly. one point. Exactly. That's how it used to be because it was more uh, scriptural, but every generation we move away from the scriptures. Exactly. And then in the famous story with Joseph and Mary... <laughs> Remember at one point the angel had to come to him was like, uh, don't be ashamed or whatever yeah. because you're the Holy yeah. Ghost, whatever child is in her womb, whatever. Yeah, this is meant by the Most High. He had got her pregnant. He got her pregnant before they were officially married. Exactly. Regardless of what the Immaculate Conceptionists believe. Exactly. Exactly. So that's the point. So the scriptures are saying, this ain't, it, this ain't nothing old either. This is something that we still should be doing. Mm -hmm. That's why, again, it was, I'm glad you brought that scriptures mm -hmm. out through the spirit. Mm -hmm. I worship, well, it says my forefathers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. With a pure conscience. But it still was in Christ, though. Exactly. And he knew that Timothy had that faith. Exactly. Because Timothy understood the scriptures, like Paul says in Romans 15 and 4. The patience and study of the scriptures, what yep. was written before, yep. you will have hope. Exactly. So these are the things, man, that we should be teaching our children. And listen, people make the excuse. Like, I'll never forget, man, we was out at the Juneteenth te um, teaching. Mm -hmm. And I think it was you and um, the, the brother that was mm -hmm. up teaching. And a guy came up, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I was talking about a similar mm -hmm. topic like this. Yeah, that's right. You know, that's true. Then all of a sudden it turns into, well, you know what? He was like, you can't force anybody to do anything. And I've heard that argument several times before. So he was like, listen, I can't force my daughters to do this. That's why I tell my daughter, listen, this is how you should be, whatever. Get a husband, marry, whatever. Mm -hmm. But if you're going to do it, use protection. Really? What are you doing, man? How about if you're going to keep doing stuff? Let, read, let's read the next verse. All right. Ecclesiastes 42, uh, verse 11. Keep a sure watch over a shameless daughter. Okay. Least she make thee a laughing stock to thine enemies and a byword in the city and a reproach among the people and make thee ashamed. Before the multitude. Okay, so you have to keep a sure watch over her. And if she just wants to keep on doing that, then maybe she's of the age where she should just move out and get a job. Exactly. And she could understand uh, how the world really works. Exactly. Because sometimes uh, kids, um, I don't know, they just don't understand how the world works until they have to pay bills. Exactly. And buy food. Exactly. And diapers. And toilet paper. And paper towels. And clothes. And more food and, you know, a phone and all these other bills. Yep, exactly. Then they start to see. Exactly. Exactly. But, you know, just going back to what that dude was saying, it's like, okay, mm -hmm. uh, okay, yeah, you're right. You can't force anybody to do anything. Mm -hmm. Okay, because like I said, I've heard that argument a, mm -hmm. a gazillion times. Mm -hmm. So you teach people, you tell them what the scriptures say, and mm -hmm. then they make their own choices. Mm -hmm. However... You don't give them a way out or a way around the scripture saying, you no, know you what, don't. if you can't control your emotions and you just mm -hmm. feel the need to have sex, at least mm -hmm. use a condom. You don't, don't do that. 
You, you stay with the scriptures and tell them what the scripture says. Marriage is honorable in all and the bed undefiled. That's the only time you should be doing it. And the scriptures in Exodus 22 that we read. Okay. That's it. Point blank. End of story. Don't give excuses. Oh, use protection. The, let's give, there's, there is no way around the scriptures. Let's go to Ecclesiasticus 26. <clears throat> all right. And 9. The whoredom of a woman may be known in her haughty looks and eyelids. So, it's how, it's their countenance. Yep. It's not the fact that they have makeup on. Exactly. Read on. Uh, verse 10. If thy daughter be shameless, keep her in straightly. So, if your daughter is shameless, just say, well, you know, this is what you should do, but use protection? <sighs> oh. No. Cut, maybe cut the phone off. Like uh, the one father took and uh, put the phone in a blender or something like that, or snatched the phone back. Yeah. And the girl, I gave her a flip phone. Right. The girl had a fit. <laughs> I thought she was right. gonna have twins right there. <laughs> so read that again. Uh, if thy daughter be shameless, keep her in straightly, mm -hmm. lest she abuse herself. Abuse who? Herself. Okay. Through over much liberty. Giving oh, her too goodness. much liberty, yep. she's going to abuse herself, especially if she's shameless. Exactly. Read on. Watch over an impudent eye. Oh, so she's talking back, huh? She got it all figured out, right? Go on. And marvel not if she trespass against okay, thee. Okay, because she's wow. shameless. She ain't got no shame. Exactly. You no know, shame in my game. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> okay, read on. She will open her mouth. As a thirsty traveler, when he hath found a fountain. So she acting all thirsty, right? Yep. Okay, read on. And drink of every water near her. Oh, that's really shameless. Go on. By every hedge will she sit down and open her quiver against every arrow. Now, that's the scriptures. That's what it's... That's what it's so wow. There, there's diseases that can result from that. Yep. All kind of different stuff that can result from that. And what people that have no shame don't understand when they do stuff like this and other things is that the consequences affect more than them exactly the consequences are far reaching so we have to be diligently uh teaching our kids and watch over them and don't let them be shameless especially our daughter exactly bro excellent point man i oh, crazy I, I missed this one completely but anyway that's the spirit uh, <laughs> I, I remember it because i went through it Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. All right. So let's go to, because um, I know we're running low on time mm -hmm. here. Yeah, sorry about that. No, no, no. You're good. You're good. Let's go to Leviticus uh, 19. Okay. <clears throat> and um, we're going to read verse 29. Okay. Leviticus 19, verse 29. Do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a harlot. I'm not going to say that word over the air. Lest the land fall to whoredom and the land become full of wickedness. All right. So don't be a momager. Exactly, right? Mm -hmm. So do not prostitute thy daughter, man. Right? So, again, same thing when you make excuses. Oh, if you're going to do it, use mm -hmm. protection. That's what you're doing. You're telling them, okay, yeah, the, you're making an excuse for it. Mm -hmm. The scriptures is telling us don't do it. And that's what we see, unfortunately, in our communities, a lot of our women are like, mm -hmm. unfortunately. And, and, and it's, the, it's the way because we stick to society instead of departing from society and getting with these words. Exactly, bro. Exactly, man. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's go from there to Deuteronomy 23. Okay. And we're going to drive the point home again with another scripture almost saying the same yeah. identical thing. How much time we got left? Okay. Okay. Deuteronomy 23, <clears throat> 17. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel, nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. Okay. There it is again. We are the Israelites. We went over many scriptures before about that. Mm -hmm. We're those people that's been brought over here in captivity. Mm -hmm. And this is what the Lord is telling us. There shall be no whore of thy daughters of Israel, nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. And that's what we're seeing. A lot of our children into these behaviors, man. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we're not teaching them. We're not being vigilant in teaching them the right things. Mm -hmm. All right. Last scripture. Mm -hmm. um, 2 Timothy 3. 
16 and 17. Okay. <clears throat> All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. All the scriptures that we went over today was given by inspiration of God. Men didn't write this. And it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, so we can correct our ways, right? And so that we've become those righteous people in the eyes of the Lord, right? And that we may be perfect in his sight. So again, being vigilant, especially with our children, these are the words of the Lord. Take heed to them. Any questions, you can call 1-877-871-1712. Again, 1-877-871-1712. Um, leave your question there, your comment, and then someone will call you back. Peace. If you would like to contact us or learn more about the Body of Christ Church, you may do so by calling, emailing, or by visiting our website. Our telephone number is 1-877-871-1712. Our email address is bodyofchrist at ureach.com. Ureach is the letter U, followed by the word reach. So that's bodyofchrist at ureach.com. Our website, thebocc.com, contains our telephone number and email address, as well as audio and video biblical lessons and other information geared toward edification in repentance and good works. Again, our website address is thebocc.com, so please feel free to connect with us today. the truth. It's time out for those lies. Whenever something happens, all I get are lies, lies, and more lies. Okay? You know what? When things happen, I know where I can go to get away from all these lies and get to the real truth. Oh yeah, I'll get the truth whether you tell me or not. I'll get the truth from the brothers in the virtual living room. Those brothers tell the truth about what's going on in the world based on what's written in the Holy Scriptures. And you know what? I can get them live. That's right, live. I can hear them every Sunday at 2 p.m. on Blog Talk Radio. And just in case something happens before then, I can still get truth from their archive shows. So keep on telling those lies. As for me and my house, we'll get the truth. 